Yeah. What did you put in your mouth? What is the chicken stew? Yeah. What is it, baby? These were the arrivals from Saturday, and it is Wednesday now, the 15th of June, and already you can see they started to feather out. On the tips of the wings, there's already some white feathers there, and they're not that fluffy anymore, but this batch, I must say, is more uniform, and they are very... Quick, comparing to the batch I had, they move, their movements are quick, quick movements and precise. Yeah. And of course, what are they? They're hungry. These are the prettiest weeds ever. And I'm catching them at the end of their flowering. And they're going to seed now, obviously, and they're going to go seed and so forth. Uh, but they are so beautiful. This bush of just yellow and then full sunlight. It's so beautiful. And this time of the year in winter, oh, it's almost winter. It's a, uh, probably about a week away from winter now. And uh, it's beautiful, you yeah? And the previous people that were here chopped it down and threw it on this heap here with a whole bunch of plastic as well. So I need to come and sort it out at some other stage. Um, once it dies back, and it will drop its seed for next year, obviously, I will chop it down and, uh, um, you know, we'll take it down to the bottom to the, uh, there's a fire spot where the guys burn everything. And we'll go burn it there. Unfortunately, I do not have a chipper. Or a mulcher or something like that that I could turn this into into compost but this is part of where the <coughs> vegetable gardens are gonna be so yeah it's gonna need to be taken out but for now I'm not doing vegetables yet but I will be doing more chickens I'm gonna need space to run the chickens as well so yeah I probably need to Get going with this throughout the winter, cleaning it up, clearing it up, getting space, getting this this grass cut short like it is a week. It's cold, we've got some cold weather coming up from the Cape side, um, from Cape Town side, and uh, we're about 2,000 kilometers away from them. But when the cold hits there and the winds pull up in inland, it hits us here. Uh, and tomorrow, the high. 16 degrees Celsius Ooh, I don't know how many or how little Fahrenheit that is but for us that is cold uh, I've been running tractors through here I would love to see what the results are going to be once these um, springtime hits let's see how the things grow it's going to be beautiful I'm glad everything is slow at the present moment. Gives me time to catch up and get done what I need to do. Growth is slow. And uh, get ahead. I'll try and get ahead because whew, as soon as summertime hits or spring hits, things start growing here in the low felt and here in Africa. And then it just doesn't stop, man. You just, there's just no way that you can. Unless you chemically doing it, you can put uh, a hold on the growth of the weeds and stuff like that. Um, 
you just manage it that's it uh, and uh, and I think winter time is a good time to just you know keep it at bay they had the the new chicks it's nice and warm out and here it's cool I feel so sorry for them in two weeks time well less than two weeks time they're going to be moving out and then these fleeces that I put over the tractors are going to be very necessary I'm going to pull out a couple of pieces more that I've got in the shed and uh, and keep them covered I think they're going to need it more than the first batch did and it will be absolute winter then and I'm just concern or yeah concerned when we get to the last bit of the winter where it's really cold you know are the birds gonna be able to to stay outside if I look at the guys in Europe and I see how they get frost still here towards the end in the beginning of their springs and then they have birds outside anyways and they get snow oh, I saw it on the Ridgedale farm where they uh, had the birds out and then snow it was uh, uh, very uh, interesting to see mud bead bird meat, meat birds <laughs> meat birds out in the snow here's the only four cattle on the farm Hopefully, in the not too distant future, we'll be able to improve the volumes of these guys. They're looking at me. They want apples. Oh, look, <laughs> where's the apples? Did they get some apples? Uh, hey, mister. Hello, my gents. Hello, Ken. How are you? All right. Hello, Mister. How's it, sir? So. Uh, Meet birds in the snow. I'm trusting the Ross 308s will survive it here in Africa's cold winters. We don't get snow here. Uh, maybe once every 10 or 20 years there'll be like a bit of snow on top of a fawn, the mountains, mountain ranges around, the, around us, but we don't get snow in any of the towns or anything like that. Uh, just doesn't get that cold. Last meal. It is Wednesday, the 15th of June. It's taken me three attempts to harvest all 100 birds. Um, I had four fatalities, 96 birds. Um, you can't hand pluck faster than. You probably could. But not that much faster than a half an hour per bird, uh, per person. So it takes extremely long. So probably the next time I'll get four people to assist plucking. And then, uh, or six people plucking, I don't know. I think that would be the easiest. And then uh, one one person to help me uh, do the restoration. Um, until such time, I can... Uh, be the proud owner of a uh, automatic plucker. I won't be feeding them tomorrow morning before I harvest them um, because it does make the evisceration a little bit more difficult. Oh yeah, by the way, these birds will be exactly eight weeks old tomorrow and uh, it was an interesting journey these eight weeks with them. My first time. And uh, learned a lot. Achieved a lot. And I'm thankful. Last butchering day for the first batch. It is June 16th, Thursday. Plucking by hand takes approximately 30 minutes per bird per person. So 
So we've got two people going, you can do four birds an hour. I cover my kill cone area with uh, brown paper, thick brown paper, cardboard paper. And then uh, for any spillover, it can be caught up easily. And then this I turn into compost as well. The blood water uh, also, and the feathers go to the compost. You can see winter is here. And I look at these empty chicken tractors. And I kind of feel sad, you know. They, uh, it was nice to watch them and see life in them, and they're moving and they're vibrant and they're happy. Um, just finished harvesting the last chickens. Uh, it took me and two assistants uh, twenty-seven hours to harvest. 96 birds, 95 birds. I'll be working out the weights and so forth. It doesn't look like there was a major weight difference between Sunday and today. That's four days later. And uh, so I'm going to be trying to slaughter at seven weeks, seven and a half weeks. I think that's the ideal time. The orchard is pretty dry, so I'm really contemplating on putting in a, a sprinkler, an oscillating sprinkler this week and just get the soil soaking wet and get a bit of life into this grass. That's with the cold weather we've been having. And I still want to run a lot of chickens here this winter, so I'm going to need to give it water. There's a lot of fertilizer now. Um, we did a lot of the aisles and there's some bigger patches down at the bottom there that uh, we haven't run chickens on yet um, and then further to the back there's also more space and grass there where no chickens was running but I would love to get just the, the chicken manure and everything into the soil and get the soil a bit more moist get life back into it. I'm pretty sure it will be good for the for the lime trees as well.